So, I wanted to show you guys my new flashcards. It's been a while since I've done the other flashcards, which you guys had seen before. And I found these recently. I found this at a department store. And you might be able to find these like maybe in an office supply store also. It's really just a single ring binded um, flashcards. And they come blank, completely blank. And you just, you know, you can design the flashcard exactly how you want it. When you first get them, they come in packs either like this and then inside, if you can see it, it comes with multiple colors so that you can actually divide your flashcards or say pick a cover, um, cover color flashcard. So it come like that and uh, this one's broken so I had to repurchase a uh, new notebook rings for these because all the ones that they come with they break real easily. Uh, the first set I got broke while I was trying to study with them out of the house and I almost lost all my flashcards. So the rings that they come with are not that great quality. Um, they do uh, become loosened. And see, I haven't even broken. used this set. Either. They just come apart really easy. And these ones are really hard to come apart. So these ones are better, and I bought a, they come in two sizes, and I usually use the uh, big ring for these, because there's a lot of cards in this one. So I have, I have two of these ones, oh here, okay, so this is usually what they look like. They have the white one with the multiple cover cards, the multiple uh, dividing cards, and then they also come in ones like these, they have a lot of different shades but they do have I have a lot of gray the gray ones are like this I'm gonna use them for my middle school kanji cards and then the other ones I'm going to use for my grammar cards sort of like this one back here so I do prefer the white ones over any of them just because having the color you gotta make sure you pick a light color because, say, like, this one is a pretty light blue, but, I mean, they have, I think, a purple set. Yeah. I found this set, and I bought two of these. And I just use them as dividers, pretty much. The blue does get really dark, so if you're going to use, like, say, I use red as a way to highlight, as a way to... Yeah, I use red as a way to highlight. It might not be so easy to see on the blue. And I think they also had a purple one. Um, and a really dark, like, what was it? A, they had, like, a really dark pink. It was kind of like this, but it was a little darker. So I knew I wouldn't be able to highlight very well because I use red to highlight. And using any other color, it would just look the same color on the red. Red, pink one. Neon, pink. So you got to make sure you pick colors. Like I showed you, like the yellow, which will show up really well. I have a really faint gray one, and I have the seafoam green one. But this is what I plan on doing. So this is still my third grade kanji. I still plan on practicing third grade kanji throughout the rest of the year. And it's Jukugo cards, so it's pretty much like the same cards that I had before that you had seen in the previous video, but I've rewritten them once again in this form. So this is, I'm going to do all my third grade. I have two of them, 200 kanji. There's approximately 100 in each deck. And my other deck is on my other desk. I'm still working on it. Um, it's going to be blue. Yonen Jukugo is going to be green. And then I have the Golnen. Jukuko words are going to be this bright neon color, bright neon pink, and then the Rokunin uh, Jukuko cards are going to be this yellow. And then I have orange for the grammar. So that's what I'm going to do. I have the cover cards already. Oops. So this is my grammar. 
I'll move these so you can see it. So this is um, the kanji for their language, kokugo. And then the kanji for grammar is bunpo. And then I have the cover, so I know this is my grammar deck, but you could tell anyway because it's not white cards. I don't really have much white. So then I have my uh, grammar points. And this is from, I Thank have the grammar know. point at the top. And I have examples, and then I flip it on the inside, and it gives me the information on the inside about it. So if I need to look more information up, then it's right there on the other side of the card. So that is how I did this. So I tried to put as many example sentences as I could fit on the front. So I went through all of my notes, reviewed them all. It took me quite a while, but it was good because I need to review them. And this is what it turned out to be. I don't know if you can see it very well. And then that's highlighted because these are actually two-part cards because I couldn't fit all the information on one card. And some of them might have three. Oops. So. But yeah. There is all of the grammar that I have written down. Pass all of this. The white part, or actually I think the blue part comes first. The blue part is the Hyogen notes. Hyogen noto is pretty much the Hyogen notes that they have in Genki books. And it's like an expression. It's just a little note that they put on the side. And a lot of them are actually really interesting. So, like for example, to play. Oh, here. Actually, this one's more interesting. So, like for example, we have it says in one of the notes, playing musical instruments requires different verbs. So, if you use string or keyboard, you use this verb for wind and for percussion. <coughs> so, there's just certain notes that are really simple. And some of the notes are blank on one side, and some of the notes have a different... Oh, and I put the sample on the back. The example sentence is on the back of these ones. But some of them have a different topic on each side. So I, I highlighted the topics on these. So let's see. It's blank, so I can still add another topic. I don't see any. But yeah, and then this one is just the simple notes. Um, I just put potential, volitional, degree verbs, just things that really don't have example sentences or they're just kind of just a little note that you need to learn. Just little notes you need to learn. How to say everything, everywhere, and everyone. And how to say nothing, nowhere, no one. Anything, anywhere, anyone. And then the same thing, qualifying nouns. Using dake, the next one's probably using shika. Yeah, it's just really simple notes. And maybe like conjugation tips I'll put in here as well. So that is my grammar card set so far. I'm still working on it. It has also one of the big rings. There's ones that are about half the size. So these are the biggest ones I could find. And they are very hard to open. So I don't usually... I usually, when I'm working on it, I'll leave it cracked open. But now that I've completed it so far, it's completely shut. So yeah. Um, let's see. So, and then we have... I showed you these. This pretty much is pretty simple. They just have my third grade kanji uh, jukuku. So they have the kanji on the front and all of the examples that are pretty common. And then you have, you flip it, and then you can see the pronunciation and the translation. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. And with these, um, some of these are upside down because I had started it like that and then I ended up changing it after like the first 20 kanji and I decided to flip it so I could just so I don't have to flip the card like that. So. 
so it makes it easier. So this is the one I usually carry on me all the time. And then that yellow thing in the back is just my line card. I was using it to was I was using it to make these lines. Um, but it got really worn down and it's really uneven and I just bought a ruler instead. I don't know why I didn't have a ruler to start with, but I just bought like a 30 cent ruler and it works a lot better. I just have that thrown in the back. Yeah, and then usually I go ahead and tie these together just to keep the cards from separating and getting them really bent up. I want them to stay inside the protective plastic cover. My other cards that you saw, the, the smaller ones, they're probably about this size. The cardboard ones, the, the cover that protects the cards gets really beat up really fast. So I really like the plastic. Like it's really, it's really sharp actually. I've cut myself a few times, um, especially this top ones. I think it's starting to get dull on the bottom though. So that's good. Because what it does is it's sharp that when I put it in my pockets and stuff, it actually it actually pulls at the thread of my pants um, sometimes. So I try to leave them in a bag. But it protects the cards a lot better than cardboard. So these cards are amazing for um, kanji or jukagol. At first I got them. I got like one set and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to use them because they're so big. And I planned on just using one card per word, but I was like, why don't I just list them out? And it's worked really well. And I love the multiple colors that you can buy because, I mean, that just helps you with organization and stuff. And then, my don't laugh at how many cards I've purchased. The cards, uh, the cards at my department store run $1.88 a piece. So each of these are $1.88. So let me take these out. So pretty much what I have is I have pencil boxes. I have two. I have this blue and green one underneath and I have two black ones. So what I have, oh, here's one of the gray ones. I really like the gray color ones. So I'm planning on using these ones for my sixth grade kanji. Um, pretty much what I'm gonna do is all of my cards, when I finish them, uh, third and fourth grade are going to go in this top blue one, and then fifth and sixth are going to go in the green one. So I have some blank ones, and then also for the fourth grade cards that I'm going to be doing. And then the back two are going to be my middle school cards. So you see I have the gray, and then in this other one I have the teal color, which I really like too because it's a really light color. Open a really faint teal color. I like how light it is. It's so close to the gray. It's really, really faint green color. And I, I don't know why. I just the color really doesn't matter. I probably should just do all white. But since it's so faint of a color, I'll still be able to see it really well. It'll show up pretty easy. So, like I said, there's uh, 1,130, I believe, middle school kanji, so I'll probably be taking up both of those for the, uh, all of six, uh, for all of middle school, and these are going to be the rest of my elementary school. Obviously, I don't have first and second grade. Uh, I did start on the big flash cards. Put these back. You might be able to find these also on maybe like Amazon. Just type in, ooh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Mindology, Mindology, I guess. Is that how you pronounce it? Mind, Mindology. Oh, anyway, you can type in the flashcards, and then they have the size right here. You type in the the size and the flash, and type in flashcard, like single ring flashcard or something, and you should be able to find these. I bet on Amazon. 
I've also been using the Kanji Den Shu Chou to work on the flashcards. So today's cards are these. Here's eight of them. And then I pretty much just go through and I write down all of the sentences, or all of, I write down all of the words on a blank card and then I do the questions as a way to kind of try to uh, recall what I had written down. But that is that. I'm almost done with it. Here is that. I've got a Niki Chol, but I've been pretty bad at keeping up with it. To show you these stickers, though. So, it's a Shiba Inu. I saw these on eBay. I really liked that one. And I mean, there's a lot of cute ones. Oh, and I got a few books too. So we have Uchu to Chikyu, Naze Doshite book. I don't have all of my books yet, but I do have some new ones. A little bit of an update. Depends how many more I have. And I'm just working on the Genki one. And I also have this book. I'm not really sure about it yet. I've been reading it a little bit. I wanted to show you the... Um, let me show you one of the dialogues. I was looking at it. All the dialogues, or at least... Yeah, I mean, like... All the dialogues are weird. Because they end in plain form. It's just really weird. <laughs> and I don't know exactly why. But yeah. That's the other thing I've been working on. Oops. Oh my god, I can hear my stomach. I'm so hungry. <laughs> anyway, so I better get back to this. So, I also wanted to show you my other flashcard book, which is for automatopoeia words, but there are some adverbs in here too. It's been organized um, alphabetically. So now I would have, right now I just keep adding to it. I don't have much in here. And you flip it up and then it gives you the meaning of the words. So it's pretty much just like any other kanji card. So, kagyo. Sagyo. And Nagyo and Wagyo. Um, I don't think there's anything in Nagyo yet, but I keep uh, just adding on to it, add more cards into it. So that's Hopefully, these. it'll help me memorize some of these because they're really hard to remember. But So, the first one up there, Gi Taigo, I think is like emotions. I have to look that one up though, I'm not 100% certain. Like the sounds of emotions that no don't normally make sounds. The next one is Gi Ongo, which is like the sound of rain, the sound of footsteps, the sound of snow falling, the sound of knocking on a door, like just noises. And then Gi Seigo, at the bottom here is um, voices like animal sounds and things like that. 
but there's also adverbs in here as well so just thought I would show you this other set that I have recently finished or I've recently made <clears throat> So lately, I've been working on I've been working on my very last third grade kanji draw book. So I still have two kokugo books left, but uh, I've been trying to work on pronunciation and writing my uh, jukugo for third grade. So I have my two flashcards, two completed flashcards here. And then what I do usually is just pick one at random and see if I know how to pronounce it. And if I don't, then I will write it out. I'll write a full line out. So, still doesn't guarantee that I'll remember it. But um, it does help writing it away. I'm working on. So, let's see. Let's see. So the ones that I didn't know, I put a star next to, and I um, wrote them out here on this notebook, on this graph paper. So I'll go through and answer all of them, and then the ones that either I got wrong, or my guess was wrong, or I didn't know and I left blank, then I put a star next to it so that I know that I need to review those next time I come back through this book. But this, this one, I haven't gotten quite that far yet because I've been working on my science book here. It's not, I haven't gotten very far yet. But I'm really interested in science, so any, so any science study that I can do is always something that I really enjoy doing. But you pretty much just, uh, it's just a third grade science book. You go through and we don't know the answers to all of them because this is just the test book. So it actually isn't the textbook. So it will refer, it has a reference to the textbook page on where you can kind of find the information. A textbook that I don't have so it does come with the answer key so I can check my answers although a lot of the questions are rather simple and especially if anyone's ever planted you know a seed before I, I really don't know the names of the plants so I, I've had to kind of learn those but I did know um, himawadi. Himawadi is a pretty common word in the science textbooks in Japanese. Himawadi is like the sunflower. Um, so they have himawadi no me, which is the um, me is like a sprout, I think. The me and uh, tane is the seed. That's what it looks like. And pretty much anyone that lives here in the States knows what a sunflower seed looks like. In Japanese, it's pronounced himawadi. Himawadi no tane. And it doesn't have the kanji in the third grade textbook, but that is it. Tane yo mako. Mako means to plant, I believe. And it's in the volitional form. Let's plant a seed, I think. And if I'm wrong, then I'm sorry. <laughs> but here is the new plant. It's a whole senka. Whole senka. Um, I had to look it up and I still don't know exactly what plant it is. I don't think I've ever seen it before. So I'm not too much into plants. I'm more into animals. So <laughs> that's still a little confusing. But it gives you the picture of the sprouts. And then this is the, um, uh, they call it the first leaves. Uh, let me see if I can find it on here. Mm hmm. They know they call it something. There's an actual... Oh, it's this. Um, shio. 
Chio, I believe is how it's pronounced. So it took me forever to figure out how to pronounce it because I kept thinking it was coal something. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Chio. And it means like young leaf. So it's like the first leaves that come off a sprout or out of a seed. So I've just been working on this mostly. I do kind of a page or two a day. And they just kind of teach you the proper way to plant a seed, how deep it needs to go in the soil, and things like that. Let's see, this is probably really boring to you guys, but I really enjoy <laughs> science, any kind of science, even if it is plants. But now I'm in the section about um, raising butterflies. So, yeah, because it says, Cho o sorachikata o shiabe yo. So, um, xiaoberu means to, um, does it mean to investigate? Ah, uh, okay, I'm not sure about that one. Xiaoberu, it, it is a third grade kanji. I think it means to investigate, but it's just saying the way of raising butterflies to investigate that. And then, of course, it has a reference to the kyokasho, which I don't have. Um, but I'm really excited because... Once I get to 5th and 6th grade, I ordered a textbook and a workbook in science and in the uh, kokugo and the language books. Um, so I'm really excited about that because I'll be able to actually work on the workbook and have a reference textbook to go with it. My hands are kind of green still. I'm trying to get it off. I was painting... Um, garden frogs outside so and my notes from and my notes from yesterday and then I finally got a graph notebook for this book which is the Tokusho uh, Kansobun so I'm gonna start looking into this um, after I finish this so, I just started it so I'm gonna try to do two or three pages every day to get it done but I haven't started, I have not started the Uchu books yet because I have all of these started and I want to start this one and it's kind of hard to keep track. So uh, this may not be started till later. And I don't have to finish this this year, but I'd like to finish at least these two this year. And this one can be finished next year because it's a fourth grade also. And I actually ordered fifth and sixth recently, so I'm pretty excited to get the next, um, uh, next book. So I've looked into this a little bit more. It is a and book. they have all of the information in the beginning on writing and then they have example material. So it's the 22 works of art or the 22 works of literature. And they have, uh, if you can see it, they have fiction and non-fiction. A list of what they have there in the book. And it just looks really interesting. And I bought the 5th and 6th grade one for about 11 bucks, And that included the shipping and the importation. So I just kind of want to show you a few new books that I've recently purchased. Most of them are off eBay. Uh, let's see. So I, I moved all of my novels up top. And I have gotten at least one or two more at a used bookstore. Most of the new books are uh, science books or also ansatz books. So they have a few, they have the two novels and then the sort of English teaching books. The first one is like a, uh, it's just kind of like a word book. Dictionary, kind of, a, it's an English study book for Japanese students. And what I really like about it is the, in the back, they come with the red sheet used to study. See if you can see it. Oh, there he is. It's got Koldo Sensei's face on it. Look. So, when you're studying, and there is, sorry, it's not focusing. Uh, let me find a page. Oh, here's one. So when you're studying, it's just like the other red sheet I have. All of the orange will disappear. So the 
orange will disappear so the kids or students can study the um, English words and then they can check their answers. So, this one is, I can't remember, oh, I think it has like predicates and stuff. Um, it's another English teaching book. Blood sugar it has more of like phrases and stuff, and um, I think I get more out of this book, of the C book, than the other one. It's ones. like a math book based off of like assassination and stuff. It's a, it's a Koda Sensei taught math book. So it's kind of interesting, even though I don't uh, like math. Quest novel, like a quest uh, manga. So. It's just a little thing that they put out. So, um, there's that. It came out recently. And then they have the album, which is really cool. So it's Gil album. So it's kind of like the, the album that Koda Sensei put together. The front has a lot of really cool color pictures. And it just has information about each student has a page. It comes with one of these also. Which is really neat. Back in there. And then we have a lot of notebooks. So everything's kind of changed since the last time. So I have my, let's see, it's my reading notebook. So it's got stories in there. Um, my Nikki Joel. This was just a miscellaneous book. I shove a whole bunch of random things I learned. Uh, Chidi, and then I'm also, no, yeah, this is just Chidi. So these two books, as I read them, are going to go in this notebook, and this one's my Uchu book, which I have another new one. So Uchu no Himitsu and Q&A. So I'm going to read these three books and translate them and put them in this notebook. So you've already seen the other two. And then Science, Science, Shakai, Saikatsu. Uh, umi wa ikiteiru. Uh, I've read part of this. And then Kotowaza, Kotowaza Trofuken. I'm actually going to put some of that in the Chidi book also. And there's third grade manga kanji. Um, and what is this? Oh, uh, Yonju Shukugo. And then we have readers, more readers. Um, my Sura Sura book. And my middle school dictionary and collection of uh, Mondai, uh, collection of questions and I got this recently too. It was on sale. Seikatsu no Zukan. And it's pretty much just a picture book. But it goes through a lot of really like descriptive everyday living things that you need to know or that kids need to know or that the kids need to know. how to iron, how to sew, and I'm really interested in the food part actually. So they have an area where uh, improper use of uh, hashi, and then they have, you know, how to use the ha how to use the chopsticks, how to hold them, how to hold your bowls, and how to pick up your chopsticks properly, and things like that. So they give you a lot of do's and don'ts, things that you don't really learn in books. And a lot of information about gardening, preparing food, things like that. And it's a pretty big book. And then they have craft area in the back. Let's see. You know, just kind of seikatsu, you know. Oh, here's a recycling. I need to, I want to look over this. The recycling in Japan is just very strict. But yeah, seikatsu just means everyday living pretty much. So it just has everyday things. And then the books I'm currently working on. Um, there's my note cards. 
all of my fourth grade, fifth grade, and all sixth grade over there. Books, and I still have some coming in the mail. So some of these you may not have seen yet. <laughs> 